Good to see you once again. Food for thought. As I shared with you earlier, God is at peace with all humanity because the sin debt has been paid. Um, so what does that actually look like? I mean, what, what's that really all about? Um, why is it all necessary? The scripture tells us, you know, while we were still helpless, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly, God's enemies. What's the issue? You know, it talks about being free from the law and things of this nature. Um, because only the thing the law did was reveal to us our sins, uh, reminded us that we were sinners. So the trouble was not with the law, uh, because the law is spiritual and it's good. Uh, the trouble is with us as human beings. Um, we were born slaves to sin because of Adam's disobedience to God. And, and because of that, you know, we have a desire to do right. Uh, but we truly don't understand ourselves uh, because we find ourselves uh, wanting to do what is right, but not doing it. Instead, we, if we told the truth, do the very things we hate most of the times, things that we uh, feel sorry about and feel helpless against. So the question is, if I know that what I'm doing is wrong, if you know that it's wrong, it shows that you agree with the law and that is good because you're making a comparison with your actions and what you know to be true. Um, so we have to realize that uh, it's not really you, it's not you, the spirit person, that's doing what's wrong. Uh, it's sin that's, that lives within us because of our human nature which was sold into slavery um, to serve our lust and desires uh, through our senses, sight, touch, smell, feel, hearing, um, which stirs up within us desires for the things that we see, the things that make us feel good, and the things that we can accomplish and succeed uh, and be successful at. These are, the only th these are the things that Satan has programmed us to consider valuable and to determine our success in life. Uh, but you know, deep down, you want to do good, but you don't. And usually when we do, it's some self-centered reason. We really don't want to do what is wrong, but we do it anyway. And so the question becomes, if I do what I don't want to do, you do what you don't want to do, you realize you're not really the one doing it. It's the sin in you. Because we discover that there's principles of life once we study God's word. That when you want to do what is right, you inevitably do what is wrong because you were sold into slavery to sin, doing wrong. Because deep down, we all, in our hearts, love what is right. But we also discover that's a power within us uh, that wars against our mind and what we really want to do. And it's this power that makes us a slave to the sin that is within us. And sin is simply disobedience to God, doing things that go contrary to the word of God. And it's because of that, uh, all humanity became a slave to Satan and sin. Um, humanity lost its innocence um, incurred this penalty of spiritual and physical death uh, and became subject to the wrath of God. Uh, we inherently corrupt and utterly incapable of choosing or doing that which is acceptable to God outside of God's divine grace movement on us as it has on humanity throughout, uh, throughout time. Uh, so truth be told, every human being is utterly depraved, uh, and, and we have no power to enable us to uh, free ourselves from this, this state, this condition, uh, which puts us in a state of being hopelessly lost, um, thus making us sinful by nature, by choice, and by divine declaration, uh, spiritually dead born spiritually dead, which means separated from God. We were born enemies to God. Therefore, we 
are sinful by nature, by human nature, because it was programmed by Satan to carry out his will, which is totally opposite of God's. Um, this is very important to understand because it's because of this truth that humanity is not responsible for the condition in which we find ourselves. Uh, we have a birth condition um, that leads us to struggle with uh, sexual immorality, impurity, greed. Uh, we tell obscene stories. Um, we traffic in filthiness, foolish talk, uh, coarse joking. Um, and these are not the things that God created for us. Uh, instead, God created us to be thankful to God. And also we find ourselves um, living immoral lives, impure, we're greedy, sensual. We practice idolatry, which is loving the world, serving money, sorcery, horoscopes, and all the other things that we do, witchcraft, palm. Um, we're hostile. We're constantly stuck in strife and jealousy. We're prone to outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, uh, factions, little cliques here and there. We envy, uh, we traffic in drunkenness and homosexuality. Uh, we kidnap, we lie, we perjure ourselves. Uh, we carouse around uh, in all sorts of fornication and adultery. Our men have been influenced with feminine, feminine qualities, uh, which is untypical of man and how God created them to be. Homosexuality, stealing, coveting, drunkenness, reveling, reveling, swindling, and a myriad of things that go contrary to the word of God. We're not responsible for all of that. There's nothing you did that made you a sinner. You were born one. And these behaviors are just the evidence that that is true. And you don't have to take responsibility for that. And, and I'd like to apologize on the church's behalf because uh, that's what the church has done, is always tried to make sinners take responsibility for the condition in which they were born in. Um, no one woke up one day saying, I want to be these things. It was just a desire within our human nature. And, and that's what makes people feel so hopeless because they know in their heart they love God. Uh, but they, and they've tried in their heart to overcome these things because they, they, they believe what the word says and they've tried to live it, but it was impossible. So I just want to let you know, you don't have to take responsibility for any of those issues. I didn't have to take responsibility for being a habitual liar. You know, all the things that I did that my human nature had a desire to do. And being programmed by the world that these were the things you should be doing. Now we don't have to take responsibility for any of that because the sin that has been paid, all of that's been taken care of. God is at peace with humanity. He doesn't look down and look at your sin and say, oh my God, what's going on? He looks down at your sin and says, listen, I've made a better way. I've made a way of escape. And you don't have to take responsibility for those things. You were born that way. But you are going to have to take responsibility for the condition in which you die. Man's salvation is fully and totally dependent on God's grace through the redemptive work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who paid that debt off for you. This is very important because just as you were born a sinner, enemies with God, if you accept God's offer of salvation, which starts with being born again, You'll be declared righteous with no doing of your own. Jesus' work will be credited to you. And when God sees you, he sees you as he sees Jesus, righteous, just, a saint. That's why it's so important that we understand that it's only those who genuinely confess Jesus as Lord will be brought into a love relationship with God and become righteous because of Jesus Christ. With no doing on your own. You were born a sinner. Now you can be reborn a righteous. And you can take this with confidence because 
uh, in, in all his fullness, God was pleased to live in Jesus Christ. And through him, God reconciled everything to himself, including you and me. Uh, he made peace with everything in heaven and on earth through his blood that he shed on the cross. And once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your seat in heaven is guaranteed. Ephesians chapter 1, verses, uh, I think, 12 through 14. Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you as a guarantee that you will inherit, inherit the kingdom of God. You never have to worry about losing your faith, as they say. Once you're born, you're born. You can't be unborn. And because of that truth, the reason that this news is so good, birth happens one time. You had the birth when you came into this world, and you have the second birth to go into a new world with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Always to be his child. The focus is, moving forward is, what quality of life do you want to live? Do you really want to live the abundant, prosperous life with good health? That's what this new life offers. And it comes with a guarantee, but it also comes with a condition. God said, if you will follow his word, his commandment of love, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, love your neighbor as yourself, he'll bless whatever you put your hands to. He'll bless you going, he'll bless you coming. He'll make you a lender and a leader, not a borrower. That's his offer. That's his resume to you. And it's just a choice. You can decide. And focus on one thing living a life that pleases God. Everything else you work for and slave for every day has been promised to be given to you in the miraculous ways that God does it. It's not gonna fall out the sky. He'll, he'll move you from being a person that makes twenty, thirty thousand $30,000 a year and put you in a position to make six figures without going through the hoops that the world tells you that you need to go through. That's God's promise to you. That's the good news to me that I don't have to take responsibility for the fallen condition in which I was born. But I do have to take responsibility for the condition in which I die. And God has given me every tool that I need to be successful and victorious by practicing it for myself to have my own experience so that I don't have to tell Paul's story or John's story or David's story. I can tell my own story and have living proof to support it. Uh, that's my story. That's my encouragement to you today. Don't let the enemy deceive you that this is not the right way because you and I both know that deep down in your heart, you want to do right. You want to please God. But you find it difficult because the very things you want to do, you don't do. That's because you're still operating by your human nature. You need to get into the word of God and learn the word of righteousness. And God will show you the keys to the kingdom of heaven that will give you access to all the power you need and the wisdom you need and the knowledge that you need to walk this walk in power and authority. Be blessed and be a blessing to all you come in contact with today until the whole world knows.